What's up everybody, I'm John. Ike is behind the camera today and it's an exciting day here at Cars and Cameras because we are finishing up my long-term, no expense spared Honda Trail 70 Resto Mod build. I've upgraded the front forks. It has an extended swing arm. It has larger wheels and tires for better high-speed stability. And the beating heart of this build is a Zongzen 190cc five-speed engine. This should be a great cruising and long distance Trail 70, relatively speaking. I've heard people with a similar setup can get into the 80 mile an hour range, which is just crazy to think about. Um, I have my title, I have tags, I have insurance, and I have registration. So as soon as we finish up our short list of things to do on this bike today, I can drive it down the road. So like I mentioned, the list of things to do on this Trail 70 is very short today. Uh, the wiring, the engine, the drive line is all finished up. It's just little nitpicky things like the rear brake isn't working properly. Uh, the whole thing just needs a polish. It has some overspray on it from when I painted my C10 and the bike happened to be in the same shop uh, and just little things here and there. After I get it on the road, I'm gonna ride it over to my dad's house, which is where my uh, primary fuel tank is. I'm just gonna ride it over there using the secondary fuel tank that I bought uh, with the bike. So my Trail 70 has been cleaned up. It still has overspray on it. You can feel it on like the horizontal surfaces. It's really a shame, but I've said this since the beginning of when I've been working on this bike. I'm not happy with this paint job. It looks good now, but it is so flaky. I'm guessing whoever painted it used, they didn't use self-etching primer. And so anytime you kind of look at the paint wrong, it just flakes off even more. So the body is going to need some paint in the next couple of years here. So I'm not all that torn up about it, but I cleaned the bike up and it looks great. So all we have to do now is just give it one more kind of once over, put some fuel in it, fire it up, put a license plate on it, should be able to hit the road. My red CT190 is all together, and as far as I'm concerned, it's ready for a ride down the street. But first, I need to see if I can do a burnout. You look very apprehensive. Just remember, man, in an emergency situation, clutch brake. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And bail. No, don't bail, just clutch brake. Let's uh, see what happens. cool first ever motorcycle burnout not so bad dude it does burnouts yeah, it does all right it's time for the maiden voyage for my red ct 190 gonna head over to my dad's house so i can put a fuel tank in it and um yeah just do other here and there things you ready dude yeah man ike is gonna be on his uh, 125 yellow one and uh yeah should be a Knock on wood, easy trip over. What is there, a mosquito? Oh, definitely gonna take some getting used to.
right, man. Something's wrong here. Turn right. Dude, it's like it's riding funny, man. It looks like you're drunk. Yeah. It feels like I am. It's steering real weird. Is it because the steering's too tight? Maybe. Do you want to try it? Yeah, I'll give it a try. Yeah, it's out really fast. Yeah, I can tell. Uh, following you. Dude, it straight up shoots fire. Man, that thing rides terrible. Yeah. Um, hopefully it's that steering nut. Remember, I didn't have a problem riding it before we yeah. did this steering so mod. we need uh, Alan to loosen that. We'll take this loose. Yep. Can we take that loose with this on here, or we got to take those off? We can try. So here's a little bit of background for what just happened. Before we turn the cameras on for this episode, we made some modifications to where the triple tree mounts to the chassis. We thought we had done it in a previous episode already. We didn't need to film it again. Uh, because we had some weird slop happening, some movement uh, in between the bearings there and the chassis, and we tightened it up. And when we tightened it a little bit too tight, because the steering was a little bit tight, it, it didn't move completely freely. And holy cow, that makes a heck of a difference in how, how the bike rides. Um, yeah. Um, I put it the best. It looks like you're driving impaired, um, which he thought he would just drive it home <laughs> thinking it wouldn't be a big deal. But yeah, um, kind of gnarly. So we're uh, getting that worked out now. We're gonna try this again. So it's just as simple right, as it. loosening that. Does that feel better? Yours is gonna be even faster, your 190 bike. Why is that? Well, because it's lighter and your gearing is more, uh, I say faster, like quicker accelerating. Yeah. Put our tools away and hit the road. All right, again. Again. Worst turning radius ever. I don't know, something's still weird. I don't know, man. It's better. It's still not right. What a beaut. Yep, what a beaut. That brake light is pretty bright. Good, that's what you want, right? Yes, sir. Safety. All right, let's take a look. You said you filled this to the to the brain? Dude, it was overflowing. Oh, really? Okay. I've used somewhere between a fifth and a quarter. I've used maybe... <laughs> I've used like over 20% of my fuel. Already. <laughs> that was like five <laughs> miles. <laughs> Dude, when I put the cap on, the fuel was overflowing out <laughs> of it, okay? <laughs> you couldn't fit any more fuel in it. Let me look. That's maybe 20%. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. You want to take that to West Virginia? Dude, I kind of want to. Good morning, everybody. We ended up riding back to Ike's warehouse last night because we realized I didn't have all the parts and tools I needed to install this fuel tank. There's some rubber grommets and stuff that need to go around the tank that were upstairs here. So the bike rode okay. The weird steering problem is not 100% fixed. It's maybe 80% fixed and we're not really sure what to do from here on how to fix it. That nut that we loosened yesterday is probably as loose as it needs to be, um, and going any looser won't fix it, but it's kind of a bummer. But the bike has a ton of power, it stops great, feels like a brand new bike other than the steering. So underneath the seat, the fuel tank needs to go in there, but right now it's just a rat nest of electronics. So gotta start by taking the battery out and uh, kind of cleaning up the wiring make room for the fuel tank.
and then I think after after I get the fuel tank installed, we're gonna hop back on the bikes and head to Ike's place. It's a nice ride out there. Got some high speed uh, sections, 55 mile an hour speed limit. Uh, get to see how this thing handles at higher speed. And that is a pretty big battery, man. That is like way bigger than the stock. That's like twice the size of a stock battery. Yeah, it's 12 she's, volt, buddy. She's large and in charge, dude. No doubt. Did that uh, battery box come with it? Yeah, I think it did. It's not made for oh, it's it. It's even bigger than the battery. Yeah, it's crazy looking. Parts from my seat fell out. I and... cannot believe they were inside the... <laughs> yeah, they were inside the bike the whole time. All right. Uh, I don't know what that is, but clearly not used. Probably turn signals. Uh, make sure you uh, see how this is supposed to have. Yeah. It needs to fit over it. Yeah. Because it might have... Might be hot. Yeah. Oh, look at all that stuff. Yeah, what a mess. Is this a blinker relay? Uh, it looks like a blinker relay. Do you have turn signals on this? No. Man, unplug that. Let me see that. Yeah. It's got to be a blinker relay. Yeah. I see you have a left and right turn signal on here. Yeah, but... um. But you have no lights because this is a 70? Yeah, and it, if it didn't, didn't come have, equipped... Well, they didn't have them. Yeah. They didn't have them until 73, I think, 74. Yeah. So if it didn't come equipped from the factory... It's it, not required. It's not required. The wiring harness I bought for this bike isn't actually made for this motorcycle. It has all kinds of extra stuff for, like, fuel level sensor and... Uh, it has an electric start solenoid here. Uh, and I'm not using any of that stuff right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it just to clear up a little bit of space in the frame so I can better get the fuel tank in there. That's the one thing about these bikes, or one of the things about these bikes that's not so great. It's everything electronic-wise is in this frame, and it's really tight. You see what I mean? <laughs> Pretty tight in there. Yeah. All right, there's one. I know I had a lot of problems with mine, and I didn't even have that much wiring. Yeah. Do you still have your old wiring harness in there, or? Oh no, it's it's out. It's out. All right. Yeah. Well, I have my old wiring harness and oh, the new it's, wiring it's harness on there. Nice. <laughs> you almost got it. Yes, sir. Look at that. There it is. Awesome. I'm gonna put all this hardware back, put it to the side, and save it for later. Awesome. Quiet on the set. That was a good one. So it's time to <laughs> install the fuel tank. All the wiring should be tucked out of the way. So uh, I have two fuel lines here, the regular and the reserve. I've plugged off the regular because I have an auxiliary fuel tank and I have just, just one three-way petcock. The one that's on the ground now. The one that's on the ground. Oh man, yeah, and then you gotta like nose dive it in there. Yep. It's tricky. Very tricky. Then you need to make sure you're not pulling your electronics to the bottom like I'm doing. Yeah, you gotta hold your tongue just right for this whole process. I had a time with mine, dude. Remember how I said you gotta push the wires over out of the way? And... Yeah. You're getting close, dude. Yeah. Now, I don't know if there's a difference between the plastic tanks and the metal tanks. This is also a reproduction metal tank, so no telling. Now, are any of those seat bolts, the bolts for the seat, interfering? No. Okay, good. You're close. Did you bother checking to see if there was another uh, rubber ring inside the frame? There are two pads that kind of cradles these. Okay, so the other rubber ring, like the one that you slid on the end of the fuel tank, there wasn't one in the frame already? I didn't check. It'll be fine. Yeah. All right, so we got the fuel tank back in. Um, we had to install this janky old fuel tank brace because this bike never had one, and well, it's just safer for the fuel tank. And plus, like, wouldn't be a cars and cameras project if it didn't have Something. Some sort of rust on it. <laughs> yeah. Check so it I'll out. I'll fix it up later on. 
But sure. Uh, yeah, sure. Throwing the battery back in. And we are gonna be ready for a ride. It's a good day, buddy. No, it's a great day, man. The, the birds are singing. Yep, the weather's beautiful. About to go on a ride. The bikes are gonna be purring. Oh yeah. So you're riding your 125, right? Yeah. Sounds good. Um, so we need to go pick up one of Ike's helmets because we just bought like a an intercom system for for so we can talk to each other on motorcycles. That's been like one of our top requested comments over the last probably three years, and we're finally doing it. Uh, so thanks to your viewership and support and all the t-shirts you guys have been buying recently we decided to get uh, like a nice intercom system for our helmets so we're gonna go for a ride we're gonna test those out it's a beautiful day I'm looking forward to it now remember guys you should always hook up a battery positive first negative last and you disconnect the battery negative last wait no negative first and then positive last yeah. excuse me safety just filling up with fuel and we'll be on the way Pretty good. I was, yeah, I was about to say your brakes were good. I was checking to see if you were going for it or not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Pet cock was off. It was off? Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. Man, the uh, auxiliary tank is bouncing like crazy. Really? Alright, I'll do something about it. We made it to our destination. Ike is over there installing the intercom unit on his new helmet. And uh, I'm gonna try to adjust the, the needle on the carburetor. It's acting like it's a little bit lean. It, it breaks up pretty bad at high RPM. Got it up to 68 miles an hour. And I believe this setup should have 80 or more in it. So with the way it's geared in this engine and everything. Um, so I'm, I'd be willing to bet I'm just missing out on a lot of RPM based on how the uh, carburetor is uh, tuned. So I just need to take that needle out and I can see if the clip can be adjusted. So it's not all the way rich, but close. yeah, it's close. So you can see that E clip there, lowering it raises the needle, which lets more fuel in, which richens your, your setup. So I'm gonna try it, probably won't be enough. I probably need to go into the carburetor and change some jets up, but this will work for today. You can't really creep around on this thing like you can a stock uh, Trail 70. Yeah, sure. It is still a Trail 70, aren't it?
What are you stuck on? Oh, a log. <laughs> Sorry. Sweet. We made it out here to Ike's place. It's a gorgeous day. A good day for a ride, man. Sure is. Uh, yeah, out here on the river. Now we just need a project that can go from the pier right off into the water. I'm down. That would be pretty sweet. It would be. Um, anyway, still running, not great. We uh, leaned out the carburetor and 67 was my top speed. So it seems like the happy spot is somewhere in between uh, where we had it uh, jetted. But I think the next thing to do is to remove the baffle from the muffler. I agree. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have any Allen wrenches out here. Um, so 68 miles an hour is my top speed for now. Although I swear people are getting into the 80s with this exact setup. So uh, it's just a matter of tuning it up. But first drive on the uh, 190 Trail 70 Resto Mod. Awesome, I love it. I'm getting more and more used to the steering. It's, you know, not what I'm used to, uh, but it, it, it'll work. Uh, it was pretty windy earlier. Ike was getting blown around. I was staying uh, a decent amount more stable, which is another thing, what I wanted for this project. The larger wheels help with that. The extended swing arm helps with that. So a little more resilient to wind. Should be able to carry higher speed for longer distances. Uh, assuming we can find a fuel tank to put on this thing, you know, that'll let me go more than 12 miles at a time. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching this episode, guys. Uh, leave a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Be sure to subscribe to Cars and Cameras uh, to catch our special episode that's coming up very, very soon. We are riding Honda Trail 70s from North Carolina, uh, 400 miles one way to West Virginia uh, to check out a place that Ike just picked up. Uh, check Isaac here out on Facebook and, nope, on Instagram and YouTube at Isaac It'll Be Fine. Cars and Cameras on Facebook at Cars and Cameras Reviews and Instagram at John underscore Cars and Cameras. Uh, visit our website, cars-cameras.com. Help support our future episodes by picking up one of our t-shirts or stickers or hats. Send it, bend it, mend it. We got the classic, it'll be fine that Ike is rocking over there. Thanks for watching again, guys. Catch you next time.